the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from Pastor Jen Cobray. Hey, I'm going to get down on my knees and pray. I need God. You need God. So we're going to go to the word of the Lord. We don't want to hear from a man. We don't want to hear from a woman. We want to hear from God who's the teacher of the church. So we're going to get down on our, my knees. And you might pray for me when I start to stand back up. That's your job. And so, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, giving you all the praise, all, all the glory, all the honor, how good it is to be in the house of the Lord. We thank you, Father, for a mighty move of your spirit in our hearts and our lives today. Thank you. And we welcome the Holy Spirit who is the teacher of the church. Welcome, touch us, heal us, strengthen us, encourage us, guide us, guard us, direct us and motivate us to be all that you would have us to be. And Lord, we'll give you the praise, give you the glory, give you all the honor. We thank you, Father, for blessing us today. We would ask, Lord, that you not only bless us, but bless all the churches everywhere that are gathering, that are hearing and preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Inland Empire as well as around the planet. Bless our brothers, our Baptist brothers and Lutherans and Methodists, Episcopalian, Charismatics, Pentecostals. Thank you for Calvary, Chapels, and Harvest, Oak Valley, and Oasis, and Inland Christian Center, the Assemblies of God, the Four Square Denomination. We thank you, God, for Ecclesia, Emmanuel Baptist, Trinity. We thank you, God, for all the great churches that are out there, for our Adventist brothers and sisters and Catholic brothers and sisters. Lord, at no time do we think of ourselves as better than them. But we see ourselves as co-laborers, workers together in one field, building one kingdom, not a man's, but yours. God, let all the glory and honor go to you. In Jesus' mighty name, with a great big shout, we all say, Amen. Amen. Well, get your Bibles and you know where we're going. Just turn somewhere in your, no, turn with me to Hebrews in the third chapter. We go line upon line, precept upon precept. God wrote it that way. You ought to be able to understand it that way. We've been two years and we're only in the third chapter. That sounds like crazy, isn't it? But guess what? There is so much in the word of God that we could spend the rest of our life in this text. That's how deep the word of the Lord is. We're just so grateful for God's word. I want to just share something with you real quick before we get into the Word. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. You need to listen today. This is so important for your destiny and for your future that you do not want to be distracted. You do not want to let your minds wander. You want to get a hold of the Word of God and do and be what God would have you to do and be. Listen to what I'm going to say to you. If you don't know the word of God, you will listen to every foolish thing that comes along. Every whim of men, the Bible calls it every wind that blows through. You will listen to all kinds of foolish things that take place. You will adhere to stuff and you will follow stuff that's not God. You will have good intentions, but you're never rewarded with God for good intentions. You've got to know what the word of the Lord has to say so that you can do and be what God would have you to do and be. Without that, my friends, you're not going to live the life that God wants you to live. Jesus himself says, I have come to give you life. You finish the verse. And more, how? More abundantly. He wants you to live an abundant life where your children are successful. He wants you to live an abundant life where your marriages are successful, that you're happy, you're fulfilled in life. Economically, your businesses are successful in every area of your life. But most important, you're fulfilled in your walk throughout this time while you're here on the planet. Listen to what I'm going to say to you. Everything wants to stop you. Listen here closely now. Did you hear me? Everything wants to resist you from being what God has paid the price for you to be. Everything wants to hinder you. Stop you in every area so you never become what God would have you to become and never do what God would have you to do. That's what this is all about. And I want you to know clearly that in every area of your life you will be resistant. There'll be resistance in your marriage, resistance with your children, resistance with your jobs, resistance with your finances. The object is you're going to go through the valley of the shadow of death 
but with Christ you come out on the other side alive well and successful keeping on going to God. A good pastor, that's where I come in, a healthy pastor cares about your future so much that he's not here to play games with you, he's not here to make you feel good, he's not here to just preach what you want to hear and get you to shout, but a good pastor says it like it is and sometimes saying it like it is will be offensive as you can possibly imagine, will rub you the wrong way. But if the word of God rubbed you the wrong way, then here's the suggestion by God. Turn around and get in with God. You're not, I'm not here to win a popularity contest with you. I'm here to win a popularity contest with God. And I care what God has to say. And I'm going to tell you something. Oftentimes, I am called by God to get into your face so that you will continue to fight the good fight of faith and make this venture on earth an adventure that is so successful and you take a lot of people with you to heaven. When you get into heaven and God looks at you and says, well done, good and faithful servant, you will thank God for you sitting in front of the word of the Lord today and you will thank him for his word. You ought to give the Lord a great big praise. Today, today, departing from the living God, which is a crazy little title of a message called Departing from the Living God. What do you mean? Aren't we supposed to? Well, let me tell you something. You've got to understand how this works. I'm going to read to you, but I want you to hear what I'm going to say. You're, I'm going to read to you scriptures, and then we're going to go to other supportive scriptures to share with you. For some of you in here, you need to get a right perspective of the Word of God. You've been taught incorrectly. When you hear this sentence, they may offend some of you, but you need to hear this. It is not a once saved, always saved doctrine. You've got to understand that Bible colleges and schools of theology are changing that as fast as possible. The way that once saved, always saved got into the church was because about 70 years ago they wanted people to come to church. They didn't want to put too much pressure on the people. In order to keep the people in the church, they watered down the message. Once saved, always saved. I will show you scripturally today is not what you want to think, that you can come before God and you can have whatever you want with God and just keep on living the life that you live and not pay the consequences, you're wrong. I want you to know that nobody can take you away from God, but you can get yourself in a place where you can walk away from God yourself. And that's what we're seeing, is that when we depart from a living God, is because we've got caught up in ourselves, we got caught up in our flesh, we got caught up in our own ideologies and our own philosophies and our own ways of doing things. We've ignored God's ways of doing things. And every single one of us in here need to take the warning that God has for you and has for me today. So Hebrews, the third chapter, starting with the children of Israel, but also telling a story for you and for me, starts off with the very first word in verse number 12, beware. Brethren, he's not talking to unsaved people. Do you see the word brethren up there? There are people that have a relationship with you just like God. He's not saying beware people who don't believe because people who don't believe don't read the Bible. He's saying beware brethren, brothers and sisters. Least there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Wait a minute, you're telling me believers can depart from the living God? I'm telling you exactly that. You could get caught up in other stuff and make a choice not to go on with God. Verse number 13 comes along and makes this statement, but exhort one another daily while it is still called to lay. Least at any time your heart hardened through the sinfulness of deceitfulness of sins. 
If you ever wanted to know why you should come to church, if you ever wanted to know why there should be a shout in the house for the Lord Jesus Christ, every single one of us, listen to this, it doesn't say exhort each other once in a while on a weekend. It says that we need to be exhorted because the world wants to dump its vomit on us. We need to exhort each other in the ways of the Lord every single day. My goodness sake. But that's not for today. That's for some other day. But guess what? I want to take you to verse number 14. In verse number 14 it says this. For we have become partakers of Christ. And we say amen to that. But listen to the biggest little word in the Bible. The word is if. I'm a partaker of Christ if. I'm a partaker of Christ if. If we hold the beginning of our confession steadfast to the end. What if I don't? What if you don't? What if the pressures of life come on you in such a way that you are frustrated with God or frustrated with the world and frustrated with where you're at and and you just kind of give up on everything and you're no longer holding on to what you first believed? Can you imagine the people coming forward? They come forward, their tears are weeping and falling from their face and all of a sudden a week or two later they're no longer in Christ because the pressures of the world have come in. My job as a good healthy pastor is to make sure as when the stuff hits the fan, I'm here to tell you something, you hit the fan back harder than it hit you. And that's what this is all about. We're learning how to do this. We're learning how to be what God would have us to be. Makes this incredible statement. If we, what if you don't? Hold fast the beginning of the confidence, steadfast to the end. Listen to these words, powerful words. I want to just share this with you. For some of you that have a problem with once saved, always saved, you know, you can just make a confession to God and therefore, not. listen, again, I'm going to make it very clear to you out of Romans, the eighth chapter says, nothing will separate us from the love of God. God will love you all the way to destruction. He doesn't want to see you destruction. He came to give you life and give it how? More abundantly. He will love you. The love is never separated. Nothing can ever separate you from love. But I'm here to tell you something. You can destroy yourself and I can destroy myself if I should choose not to go on with God and hold fast into the things that God has for me. Go with me and let me just check check it out for yourself. In in, uh, 1 Timothy, in 1 Timothy, the first chapter, verse 18 says this. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them that you may wage a good warfare. I want you to know something, saints. Hear me now. You're in a war. And you need to know how to battle the war. Listen closely. In verse number 19, it makes this statement. Having faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected concerning the faith, have suffered shipwreck. Can I tell you something? See the word suffering shipwreck? You don't enter into a shipwreck unless you're into a ship. I don't stand on the shore and have a shipwreck. I happen to be a sailor. Debbie and I love to go out sailing. And when we sail out there, let me tell you something. If I run into a rock or another ship and the boat sinks that we're on, I'm in a shipwreck. But I had to be in the ship to get into the wreck. I don't stand on the shore and see two boats collide together and both of them sink and say, wow, I was in the shipwreck. If I'm in a shipwreck, guess what? I've been there and now I'm sinking with the ship. And many have departed from the shipwreck. It's amazing for us to miss these simple scriptures. Verse number 20 says, of whom? And then he goes on and names people's names. Of whom I delivered to Satan that they may... Learn not to blaspheme. If you will, go with me to 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verse number one. Watch this. We're talking about once saved, always saved. I don't think so. Watch this. 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verse number one. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in latter times. Now, I don't know when latter times are. I don't know when the eastern sky is going to split and Jesus is coming back. How do you know it's not now? But I do know something for sure about latter times. Your in your latter time. Did you know that? You're not coming around again. You're not coming back as a frog and progressing to be a monkey and from a monkey to a human. 
Oh, please, give me a break. You think that, someone ought to slap you. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, you're in your last times. So he says, in the last times, listen to this, some will depart from the what? Faith. You can't depart from something unless you're in something. I didn't write that. Get the picture? Some will depart from the faith. That means they were in the faith before they had departed from the faith. That means they probably went to church. That probably means they read their Bible. That probably meant they believed God. That means they confessed Jesus. They were in the faith and departed from the faith. Why? They gave heed to seducing, uh, 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 deceiving spirits and doctrines of devils. In other words, they didn't know what to follow. They followed the wrong things. You and I could have that happen to us. We don't know what to follow. We follow the wrong things. We hear someone say something. It sounds pretty good, but guess what? Uh, I guess I'll follow that. He sounds like he knows what he's doing. I want you to know something. You don't follow anything except the word of God. If God says it, that's the way it is, and we'll act on what God says. Somebody ought to say amen to that. Just for fun, let's just do another verse. We're talking about this once saved, always saved understanding. You know, you can just treat God any way you want to treat God, and you're going to make it to heaven because you once professed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I got news for you, man. If you don't do some things, you're probably not going to make it. Now listen to this in 2, Timoth uh, 2 Peter. Let's go to the third chapter, verse number 17. Pop it up. It says, you therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware least that you also fall from your own steadfastness. In other words, I had to be steadfast with God. That just told me I could fall away. And listen to this, being led away. I had to be in it to be led away from it. I had to be there with him in order to be led away from him. To be led away with the air of the wicked. My goodness sakes alive. For all of us that are in here, this is a... Warning, this is a very important thing. Now listen to what God's given me to give to you. I love this. How not to depart from the living God? I don't want to just tell you what not to do. I want to show you how not to do it. That's what this is all about. If you're going to be in a healthy church, you've got to know not only what the Word of God does say, you ought to know how to operate the Word of God in your life and then how to watch yourself so that you make sure that when the eastern sky splits and Jesus comes for you, you're going up. I don't know about you, but I want to be there. How about you? Therefore, I've got to listen to this, how not to depart from the living God. There's four simple things God gave me. Here's number one. Beware. You could fall. If you don't know that this is a warning for every one of us, you will not take it seriously and you'll treat it like a suggestion. When you treat God's word like a suggestion instead of a fact, you get in trouble. Are you listening to me? Beware. Did you notice the last verse that we were in in 2 uh, Peter, 3rd chapter, verse 17? Just pop it up, if you will, for me. And it says this, and therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware. Be aware of something. Then do you remember the first word that we read out of Hebrews 3rd chapter, verse number 12? Listen to the word. It says, beware, brethren. I mean, God is warning all of us, even though we're saved, even though we're going on to be with Jesus, we could operate in something different than God and walk away from where we're at. And his thing is, beware. We need to know that. I remember as a young man, my 19, 20 years old, I would just cruise through a stop sign Big red lights behind me, pulled me over to the side. Officer comes up alongside the car. He says these words to me, I'll never forget them. He said, did you see the sign? I said, yes, sir, I did. He says, it said stop. I said, yes, sir. He said, stop is not a suggestion. <laughs> Let me see your license. Oftentimes we'll hear the beware and consider it to be a suggestion. You and I need to know it's a warning. You and I 
could walk away from this. You and I could give up on it. You and I could operate in foolishness and find ourselves out there wondering where God is and why God doesn't come through for us. And my goodness, we could find ourselves in a place where we're absolutely devastated. And I love you too much to let you get there. Fighting too hard for you to, so you don't get there. You've got to come, and so do I, to a place that this is not just a, something we take as a suggestion, but something we take very serious. Every single one of us, when we've got a relationship with God, you're going to have to develop that relationship with God seriously. And you're going to have to find out not what man says, which almost came out, but what God says. And that's what this is all about about are, are you are you following me at all we're talking about how not to depart from a living God first one is that you must beware and know that it's a warning to each and every one of us how not to depart from a living God number two you're going to have to endure sound doctrine now listen closely to what I mean by that I want to take you to the scripture and I just want to read it to you and then I want to explain it to you Sound doctrine means sound doctrine. The word doctrine means teaching, sound teaching. Sound teaching means healthy teaching. That means it comes from the word of God. You can have teaching from school that doesn't come from the word of God. You can have teaching from society or politicians or economic conditions that don't come from the word of God. But sound, healthy teaching comes from the word of God. Thus saith the Lord God. And you're going to have to, in, and it's a funny little word, isn't it? Endure the word of God. Why? Oh, hear me. Because the word of God will rub you the wrong way. Why? Because it's getting you out of where you're at and getting you to where he's at. And let me tell you something. We're made after his image. He's not made after our image. And we need to get to where he's at, not get to where we're at. Is anybody listening? And you're going to have to endure sound teaching that will oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes rub you the wrong way. Go with me if you will. Let's check it out in the word of God. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, let's take a look at verse number three. It says this, for the time will come when they will not endure sound teaching, doctrine. There's a time coming when the people don't want to hear what the word of God has to say. Why wouldn't they want to hear what the word of God has to say? Listen to this, they will not endure sound teaching, but according to their own desires. In other words, they want someone to preach the word of God to them that makes them feel good about themselves. Let me say it again. That side didn't get it. Maybe you will. They want somebody to preach to them that makes them feel good about themselves. And that's what we've done in American churches for years. We come along, we say it, so that the people are comfortable. There's no frustrations. There's no problems. There's nothing at all. It's easy. It makes me feel good. I'm going to go to church and feel good about myself. Let me tell you something. The only time you can ever feel good about yourself is when you endure sound doctrine or teaching. Not according to your desires, not according to your feelings. You change your feelings to his feelings. You've got to change your desires to his desires. Sure, we're not there yet, but we're learning how to do this. When we do, man, we become the witnesses of Jesus Christ all across the planet. And then he comes along and makes this statement. says, because they have itching ears. In other words, they really want someone to come along and tickle them, scratch them. Have you ever scratched something that itches? Oh, ever had a back scratcher? And you go, oh, it feels so, so good. That's what they want. They want somebody to make them feel good. I'm here to tell you something. I don't care what church you go to. You make sure you get in a church where the pastor rubs you the wrong way. You got a church now where you can grow and be healthy. I said it before. I'm going to say it again. This is not about love boat stuff. 
Pastor's not called to be the love boat captain. Pastor's called to direct people into heaven and help them get there and fight a good fight of faith. Why? Because Jesus came to give you life where? More abundantly. Is anybody listening? Because they have itching ears, they will heap to themselves teachers. Now watch this, verse number four, pop it up. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to stories. This is not some reader's digest suggestion. This is the B-I-B-L-E, thus saith the Lord God. And if God says it, means it, it'll be in the scripture two or three times that supports it and makes it healthy and strong for you to follow. If you don't follow it and see it in the word of God, then I think there ought to be a big question mark and I think you ought to check it out before you go any further. Let me try it again. I think there ought to be a big question mark and you ought to check it out before you go any further. You know it's true. They won't endure. And that means you've got to endure this. I sometimes come to church and they'll talk about something like prayer. And I go, ugh, I've just been lousy in my prayer life lately. Just rubs me the wrong way. I don't want to think about this. Ugh. They'll talk about, I hate this one, fasting. Ugh. I hate fasting. I want to eat all the time. And all of a sudden, something on the inside says, I'm developing to be more like me instead of me trying to be like you. It isn't going to work. Is anybody listening? So important for us. We're talking about how not to depart from the living God. Number one, beware. You've got to take this serious. It's not a suggestion. Number two, endure sound teaching. Number three, you're going to have to fight a good fight of faith. Oh, yeah. See, a lot of times people have faith, but they don't have a fight behind their faith. Are you following me? I got faith, brother, but you don't have a fight behind your faith. And then what happens? You have faith until somebody puts pressure on you. Then you walk away and wonder what's going on. I want you to know something. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse number one. You cannot see it. So you're believing in something you don't see, something you don't know, something you can't hear. You never heard from God. You never saw God. Yet you're staking your whole life on it because there's something on the inside. And what's on the inside is the Holy Spirit telling you. And you're going to have to believe something you never even saw when the rest of the world says no, when the rest of the world's going one way, and the rest of the people say you're crazy, the rest of the people say you're a fanatic, the rest of the people call you weird, call you strange, call you crazy. I'm here to tell you you something we're fighting a good fight of faith and it's a fight faith without a fight is no faith at all Paul writes these words I have Timothy I have fought a good fight of faith why did he have to fight it man because there's always something trying to rob your faith get your faith get your future all of a sudden, you give up on God or you wonder about God and you wonder whether or not. Listen, I don't care what man says. I only care what God says. I'm not giving up on God. And you're going to have to fight the fight of faith. I like what it says. You already read the verse earlier. Verse, let's go back to it. 1 Timothy 1.18. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may, by them you may wage a good warfare. In other words, you got something to stand on. Wage the warfare. You're in a battle, my friends. You're in a fight for your kids. You're in a fight for your life. You're in a fight for your future. You're in a fight for your marriage. You're in a fight for your health. You're going to fight for everything you know. You're going to fight for your destiny. You're going to fight for your purpose. You're going to fight, but you don't have to fight for heaven. I'm here to tell you something. You've got to fight for heaven. You've got to hang in there when everybody else is leaving. But you're going on with God. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. It's a fight. It's not a coast, a little, a little, a little stroll down the lane. It's not a little rowing in the boat. It's not some. You're in a war. 
And you've got to understand that you're the soldiers in the war. Because this is a battle trying to get your faith. If he gets your faith, he'll get your future. And he can't have my faith because I've got a future in Christ Jesus. Listen to verse number 19. How am I to wage the war? Listen to what it says. And it says, having faith. It's a good fight of faith, my friends. We all are in this. This is a fight of faith. Faith is, I don't see how this is going to work. I don't see the results. Seems different than everybody else. Doesn't fit with my personality. Doesn't fit with my feelings. Doesn't fit with what I think. Doesn't even fit with what I've been praying. But I know it's God. And I'm holding on to God even though nothing looks like it's sound or normal. But I know my God is real and he will come through for me. That's fighting a faith, a fight of faith. You stop and you think about Paul for an example. I mean, the guy is beaten. How many times? Shipwrecked. Thrown in prison in Jerusalem. I don't see anybody coming to his rescue in Jerusalem. Then he gets on a boat, goes to Rome. The boat sinks. He's in the water three days. Where's God? Comes along the shore. Starts to preach healing. Snake bit. I had a ministry like that. I'd say, I give up, God. You must not be there. I quit. Give the ministry to somebody else. I'm tired of being in prison. I'm tired of having my back broken open. I'm tired of bleeding for something. Where are you, God? Oh, no. He says at the end of his life, I have fought a good fight of faith. Some of you have been given up on your faith. Some of you have been backing down because you don't see the results, you big babies. You need to get to some place that'll tell you like it is. This is a fight. And like a bulldog to a piece of meat, you don't let go of it because God's coming through for you. Come on, somebody. You know it's true. We're talking about how not to depart from a living God. You're going to have to know it's true. Beware. Take it as a warning. Be serious. You could fall. Endure sound teaching, number two. Fight a good fight of faith, number three. And I love this one. You fight a good fight of faith with faith and a good conscience. Look at what it says in verse number 19, but you need to understand what it means. Having faith and a good conscience. A lot of times people don't know what good conscience is. Can I tell you what it is? Good conscience, you think, and so did I, that some of this, that it's just feeling good about what you do. I have a good conscience about what I do. How about if I feel good about what I do, but what I do is not important to God? I can still feel good about what I do, even though what I do is not important to God. I can be a philanthropist and give billions of dollars away still die and go to hell. Can I tell you something? Even if I gave every penny away, that would not get me in heaven. That's not how you get to heaven. The Bible says none good but God. So I can do what I think is all good stuff, but only way I can do anything that's good, listen to this, is if I do God stuff. And a good conscience is what God thinks, that's what I do. Not what you think, not what you feel. I talked to a man the other day. He was a rich man. He says, you know, I've got a good conscience. I sleep good at night. Yeah, man, I'm sure you do. You do all those nice things for people. But guess what? You're going to die and go to hell. You're not going to sleep then. The problem with it is you can't get to heaven by doing good things. If you could get to heaven by doing good things, then all God had to do is send you a pamphlet instead of his son to have the snot knocked out of him and beaten bloody mess. Why did he send his son? Because you can't get there by doing good things. That's not good enough. No matter how good they are, it's not good enough. You get there by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Without you understanding that, you will fail. 
And you'll have good conscience. You ever have teenage children? They say, oh, I've got a good conscience. Good conscience doing the wrong thing. I don't care what the world says is good. Only God says it's good. So listen to me. Are you listening at all today? Four things God says so you don't depart from the living God today. There's probably 40, but I'm only giving you four. Number one, take this serious. You could depart. You're going to have to do something. Number one, you're going to have to endure sound teaching. Sound teaching will rub you the wrong way. Doesn't matter if you like me or not. I love you. I love you so much I will get in your face just making sure you get to heaven. You can dislike me all the way there, but when you get there, you will appreciate you had a pastor that cared about you. Listen to me. Number two, you're gonna have, number three, you're gonna have to fight a good fight of faith. This is a fight, not just faith. I got faith, I got faith. Are you fighting? If you're really fighting, you'll be at rest, which is another story. Number four, conscience. Conscience is clear because of God. It's God's thinking. What God thinks, that's what you do. And that's how you have a clean, clear, good conscience because none good but God. Now, I said all of this to tell you that when all hell breaks out against you, remember when I started? I said you travel through the valley of the shadow of death. If you're in a healthy church that's teaching you the word of God, when all hell breaks out against you, you keep going on with God. Watch. I want you to check out the video that our department made just for you to see the results of sound teaching. In August of 09, my husband's job was going through some wishy-washy times. They didn't know if they were going to make it. So I decided I needed to go get my yearly physical, just in case we didn't have insurance if the doors got closed at his job. Went down for my mammogram, and a week after that, I got another call to go down and take a biopsy. So three days after the biopsy on September 11th of 09, I got a phone call that morning that I had breast cancer. When I first got the news that I had breast cancer, to be honest, I was scared. But... I already had the peace of God. A couple of days before I actually heard the news, I had gotten this peace that I felt like God showed me that, yes, you have it, but you're going to be okay. It's hard to think about what you're going to look like or feel like, you know, after you have that, especially as a woman. As a woman, we feel like we are um, identified by our hair, by our breast, you know, by our body, because that's just the way we are. We ended up going ahead and having a double mastectomy and having them both removed. About two weeks after my very first chemo, I was taking a shower, washing my hair, getting ready for church, and out came handfuls of hair. And it was really a tough reality for me. I remember I kept my, I kept my um, scarf on because I didn't want to look at my head. And um, from there I fell like into like a three-day depression. And I was just like, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I just felt so down and so depressed. Finally, a few days later, before I even opened my eyes, I felt God telling me, get up, what are you doing? You get up and take authority over yourself. And I woke up, I got up and I was like, that's right, what am I doing? I'm giving the enemy such place over my life. So I got up and I took authority over my, I took authority over my mind, my will, my emotions, because that's where it's all at. And um, I said, I'm not giving the enemy that place anymore in my life. My church family, they were amazing. I, I felt so spoiled because they pulled together. They brought meals. The Rock Church, the love, I cannot even, it's unbelievable. Now it's amazing. It's been almost, it's been about two years, and I just finished my last um, surgery um, a couple of months, about a month and a half ago. But to go through this and to see God take your hand every day and walk with you and lead you. So for me, I feel like I have changed. I have changed so much. I didn't know I needed to do so much changing, but God changed my life in a way that. I never dreamt possible. He's so faithful. His faithfulness to me that I've experienced is unbelievable. 
That's the God, that's the God we serve. That's the God I serve. <laughs> He's amazing. Now I look in the mirror and it's me looking back again because I got my hair, I've had my reconstruction and you know, the only thing that's different is I'm changed that much more on the inside. I feel like if you could see inside of me, I am jumping for joy, I am shouting from the rooftops. It's a shout of joy, it's a shout of victory, it's a shout of overcoming, no matter what it is. It's a shout of being in love with God. That's why you've got to take this serious. Oh yeah, pressures are gonna come. I don't want you to be knocked off your feet when they come. I want you to go through the valley of the shadow of death and come out the other side with a shout for Jesus. So number one, beware. Number two, endure when I'm in your face. I'm there for a reason. Number two, fight a good fight of faith. Number three, or number four, good conscience is a God conscience. That you're doing things God's way. If God spoke to you today, come on, give the Lord a great big praise. I just want to make sure everybody's all right before you leave today. It's so important for us. That's where we live. This is the city we live in. Some of you need to stop messing around with God. Today is your divine appointment with God to get saved, to get right with God and go to heaven and deny your presence in hell. The only way you're going to get there is his way, not your way. Jesus made a statement. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father except by me. That's what Jesus said. You can't get there my way. You can't get there some well-meaning church committee's way. You can't get there your way. We're going to have to get to heaven if we're going to get to heaven his way. There's no other way but his way. Jesus tells us in John 3rd chapter how to get there. He says these words, you must be born again. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. You must be born again. Most people that attend American churches don't really know what born again means. Born again means this. From the beginning of the Bible, to the end of the Bible. It means you've given God all of your heart. It means you've given God all of your life. You see, it's an all or nothing relationship with Jesus Christ. Always has been, always will be. God forgive us in American churches for 250 years. We've watered this down because we're afraid of the people. All or nothing means all or nothing. I'll prove it to you that it's all or nothing by the words of Jesus out of the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation. Jesus himself is speaking. He says, I'm coming again. When I come, I better find you hot or I better find you cold. Because if I find you lukewarm, I will vomit you from my mouth. That's what he said. Lukewarm people that call themselves Christians are not real Christians at all. And they're going to get vomited from the mouth of Jesus. Now look. Some of you think you're going to go to heaven because you're good. Some of you think you're going to go to heaven because your mom and dad told you you are a Christian. Some of you maybe carried a cross or a St. Christopher around your neck all of your life. Maybe you were christened or baptized when you were a baby. But did you know that none of that is in the scripture that gets you to heaven? It won't get you to heaven. Some of you say, I love God a whole lot. You think you're going to get to heaven because you love God? Can I tell you something? Someone needs to love you enough to tell you something. You're not going to get there. Nowhere in the Bible says because you love God, you get to go to heaven. You're not going to make it, and somebody needs to tell you the truth. There's only one way to get to heaven. That's Jesus' way. And he said these words, you must be born again. And born again means you have given God all of your heart. You know why you've got to give it to him? Because he's not a thief to rob it from you. He's not a conniver to talk you out of it. He's not a manipulator to make you do this. He's not going to hit you in the head with a two by four and make you give him your heart. He could make robots if he wanted, but he didn't. He gave you a free will choice to give God all of your heart and to give God all of your life. Today in this safe, friendly place, we have laughed, we have sung. It's been pretty intense at times. 
But I'm here to tell you something. God loves you enough to go to the cross and died for you on that cross so you could go to heaven. And all you have to do is to be born again. That means you're going to have to give it all to him. All of it. Every single one of you that are in here, someone needs to tell you the truth. Maybe you haven't given God all of your heart, you haven't given God all of your life, or maybe you did at one time, but you backed off, you went your other way. It's called backsliding, called apostasy. Now you're going to come back. Today's your day. Here's how it's going to work. You say, Pastor Jim, how do I give God all my heart? How do I give God all, all my life? In a moment, I'll count to three. I'll go like this. One, two, three, and I'll pop my hands together. Bang! When you hear that sound, bang! Your hand goes up. I'll see your hand go up. Why am I asking you to raise your hand? Because of the words of Jesus. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. But if you deny me, I'll deny you. I'm a man. I'll see your hand go up. What you're saying by the raising of your hand is I don't want Jesus in my head like most Americans. I already know who he is. Celebrate Christmas every year. Celebrate Easter every year. But I know that won't get me to heaven, heaven head knowledge. I've got to give him all of my heart, give him all of my life. I'll see your hand go up and you put it right back down. Today is your day of salvation. Today is your day of salvation. All across this auditorium, are you ready? I'm going to count to three. Pop my hands together. You get your hand up all over the place. Are you ready? Here it is. One, two, three. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. There's one. Thank you. There's two. Thank you. There's three. Thank you. There's four. Thank you. There's five, six, seven. Thank you. Back here. There's eight. Thank you. There's nine. Thank you. There's ten. Anybody else? There's 10 wise people. Anybody else? Real quick. There's 11. Thank you. God bless you. Put your hand down. Anybody else? Real quick. There's 11 wise people. You don't want to be like that guy in that, that testimony that says, man, I should have. I, I wish it would have been different. There's 12. Thank you. Anybody else? There's 13. There's 14. Anybody else? Real quick. Anybody else? For, anybody else? There's 14, there's 15 up on top. Gotcha, man. 16, thank you. God bless you. Anybody else, real quick? Anybody else? Anybody else? Wave at me if that's you. Anybody else back over here somewhere? Okay, 16, 17, gotcha. Anybody else? Anybody else? Well, let's give the Lord a great big praise for 17 white people. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask all 17 of you, get a hold of your coat, purse, sweater, Bible. I'm going to ask the rest of you not to get up and leave. That's rude when you do that. Anybody that should have raised their hand, but you didn't raise your hand, but you know you should have, I'm going to ask you to get out of your seat, get in the aisle, meet me in front. All 17 of you and anybody that should have, get a friend, get your stuff, meet me right here in front. No one leaves during this period of time. Let's stand and welcome them as they come. You come right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Because Lord, I give you my heart. Come on, come on, come on. I give you my soul. And I live for you, my love. Come on, they're coming. Give them a hand as they come. Every morning. Come on, you come too. Come on. You come too. You come too. You come too. You come too. Come on. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. And I live for you alone. Every breath that I take. Every moment I Man, my, my. Come on. Let's give the Lord. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. Thank God, good. All of you in front, God bless you for coming. I want you all, give me your attention for a moment. Look to your left. See this guy waving at you. His name is Pastor Dave. Pastor Dave's a really good guy. No weird stuff goes on. You know how you go to church, you wonder if they're going to be weird. No weird stuff goes on. Only when Pastor Dan preaches is it weird. <laughs> the rest of us are cool, you know what I mean? 
And so no weird stuff goes on. He's going to do three things. Let me tell you what he's going to do. One, he's going to, listen to this, he's going to pray with you so that you invite Jesus into your heart. you got to invite him in. You know, he won't come in. He's a gentleman unless you invite him in. He doesn't come in your heart because you need him. He went to the cross because you need him. Now you need to invite him in. Is that okay? Second thing he's going to do, he's going to give you some free information, some free literature that you could take home now that you're a Christian after you've prayed that prayer. What to do next? What does God want you to do next? Third thing, he's going to introduce you to an SPT, a spiritual personal trainer. That's a friend. That's how we roll around here. We give away friends. So when you come to church, you'll have a friend waiting for you, meet you before church service, buy you coffee, tea, nachos, whatever. We want to help you get strong. Why? Why, why, why? So you don't go back and fall through the cracks giving up what God's doing today. We're here fighting a good fight of faith for you so that you'll be strong. We want you to win your families, win your neighbors, win life. And we want you to live and be prosperous in every area of your life. And as you learn how to apply the things of God in your life, you will be successful in every area of your life. Okay, so open your hearts. You said you're going to give God all your heart and all your life. Hook up with an SPT. You're going to be blessed if you do. Make a left turn. Follow Pastor Dave right over there. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise.